Welcome, in this video I'm going to share my tips to make riding indoors more comfortable. Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. The goal of this video is for you to take away some tricks and tips to improve the comfort on your rides. Now winter's approaching, most of us will opt to ride on the trainer. Whilst nothing compares to the feeling of being out on your bike, during the colder months it's not always a feasible option. And riding when it's cold, wet and dark just doesn't motivate me. It doesn't provide me with the same training benefit that I'll get from riding indoors and also being dependent on the weather doesn't help with staying consistent, which is one of the most important things. I started training indoors about seven years ago and at first I hated it. I found it not only boring, but pretty uncomfortable. Being uncomfortable on the trainer would lead me to get off mid-session or skip sessions. So consider these tips well tested. Over the years, I have made many tweaks to my setup to allow me to be more comfortable and increase my enjoyment, ultimately getting the most out of each session. Hopefully, the tips that I'm about to share with you will make your indoor training more comfortable. I always wear a summer or lightweight bib short. They are made with lighter weight materials that are more breathable and the panels have been designed specifically to help with cooling. It's really important to use a decent pair of bib shorts with a good pad that you find comfortable. I've never quite understood when people use older or cheaper pair of bibs for the turbo compared to what they ride with outside. In addition to a lightweight bib short, I would also use chamois cream. This will help to stop any skin irritations such as chafing, rubbing, and also has antibacterial properties. I don't wear a jersey when I ride indoors. However, I do wear a lightweight mesh base layer. This just helps to um, wick away the sweat from the skin. Along the same theme of summer and lightweight kit, when it comes to socks, I always use a, a lightweight mesh summer type sock. The last bit of clothing advice is around wearing mitts or gloves with a pad. This will prevent any uncomfort holding onto the bars if you're used to wearing gloves, but more importantly, it's to stop sweaty hands on bar tape. I find it uncomfortable, but also secondly, you don't really want sweat dripping through your bar tape onto your components. One of the most important bits of kit when it comes to riding indoors is a towel. Let's face it, you're gonna get sweaty pushing hard on the pedals. With limited airflow, your body will be sweating more than you would notice outside. So having a towel to be able to wipe the sweat off your arms or your face will make it a much more comfortable experience. It doesn't have to be a fancy towel, just a small hand towel will do. I've recently started using these towels by Lululemon. I'll put a link in the description below, but they're super absorbent and a good size to be able to sit over your bars. Wireless headphones or earbuds are really important when you're riding indoors. Something an annoying cable flapping around or getting caught or getting stuck to your skin when you're sweaty. I use the Bose Sport Buds because they have been specifically designed, used in sport and get wet or sweaty. And they also have um, noise cancellation, which will help block out some of those annoying sounds from your group set, turbo or fan. Just be careful not to knock them out when you're using your towel because trust me, there's nothing more annoying than dropping one mid-workout or mid-race. Continuing with the theme of keeping cool, a fan is crucial. You want to have a good fan that can provide you with a strong blast of air. This will make riding indoors so much more comfortable and bearable. I used to have two fans, one pointing directly at my face and the other focused more on my frontal area. I've recently upgraded to the Wahoo Headwind, which I found to be a fantastic piece of kit. It is expensive for a fan, like I said in my previous video, but being able to control it or sync it to your heart rate is a really nice feature and one I don't think I could do without. Having good airflow will make you more comfortable and it will allow you to give your best performance. My last tip around being comfortable indoors is about adding motion. Whether it's varying the position from your hands on the hoods to the drops 
or riding out the saddle. It will help alleviate some of the pressure by sitting in the same position for up to an hour at a time. There are also additional ways of adding motion, such as a climb simulator or a rocker plate. I've been using a rocker plate for the past six months and have been using four planes of motion, forward, backwards, side to side. When it comes to adding motion, you're not only improving the experience and immersiveness and that feeling of riding your bike, but you're adding a huge increase into the, how comfortable you will be. I hope you found these tips useful and they make your riding indoors more comfortable. Thanks for watching, see you in the next one.